We'll call this meeting of the City Jefferson City Council to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Krauss? Tully? Here. Fire? Here. Niles? Here. Miller? Here. Randall? Here. Lars? Young? Here. Thank you. Alderman Lars is excused tonight. Uh, we move on to number two. Any public participation? Anyone from the public wishing to address the council may do so. We ask that you please come to the podium, state your name and address, and the reason for appearing. Seeing no one, we'll move on to number three, ordinance number 8-20, an ordinance to add section 127-1 to the Jefferson Municipal Code Book to incorporate the wireless communication facilities in the right-of-way. President Brandle, please. I'm a Mayor Opperman, member of the City Council and Jefferson Public. The ordinance number 8-20, ordinance to add section 127-1 of the Jefferson Municipal Code book to incorporate the wireless communication facility in the right way. The ordinance begins with three pages of definitions of terms used within the uh, ordinance, and then 12 pages of ordinance. I know you'd like me to read the whole thing. <laughs> but in lieu of reading the entire very lengthy and very technical ordinance, the complete copy is available for the public for public inspection at the office of the city clerk. Because this is the first reading of the proposed uh, or ordinance, uh, no further action is required at this time. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to resolution number 56, tonight's consent agenda. Regulatory chair, Ms. Butter, please. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, and Citizens, City of Jefferson Resolution number 56. Be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Jefferson, Wisconsin, that the consent agenda for December 15, 2020 is hereby adopted. Vouchers payable for December 2020 in the amount of $228,044. Payroll summary for December 4th, 2020 in the amount of $149,767. Council minutes from December 1st, 2020 meetings of the Common Council. Licenses as approved by the Regulatory Committee. We had one operator's license for Casey Davis uh, for Stable Rock. I would so move. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Thank you. This is Niles. Any other questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of tonight's consent agenda, please signify by saying aye as your name is called. All your folks. Alderman Tully. Aye. Fire? Aye. Niles? Aye. Miller? Aye. Randall? Aye. Young? Aye. Lars? Aye. Miller? Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 57, a resolution amending the City of Jefferson Personnel Manual relating to the conversion of extended medical and illness bank credits. Personnel Committee Chair Miller, please. Thank you, Mayor, fellow council members, and citizens. City of Jefferson Resolution Number 57. Whereas the Jefferson Personnel Committee has reviewed the current city practice of allowing non-represented employees to approve extended medical and illness pain credits and the conversion of said credits, which may be used to pay for health insurance for the employees and their eligible dependents. Whereas the last major amendment to the extended medical and illness being credits policy occurred in 2012, including the placement of caps on the accrual of extended medical and illness paid credits and the elimination of the ability of non represented employees hired after June 1st, 2012, to convert accrued extended medical and illness credits to paid health insurance benefits upon their separation from employment. Whereas the personnel committee recognizes that the future obligation to convert accrued and unused sick leave credits to paid health insurance continuation is an unfunded liability that until recently was annually absorbed into the city's general fund budget, for which beginning in 2021 will be funded with the city's general fund balance. And whereas the personnel committee desires to make the city's future financial obligation to convert accrued and unused sick leave credits to paid health predictable, so that the city may appropriately plan to meet the currently unfunded financial liability, it is recommending the following change to the city's personnel manual. Effective 12-15-2020, the conversion day shall be converted to a dollar value based on the then current wage rate. This shall be the retirement conversion bank and the extended medical illness bank time earned after 12 15 2020 shall not be eligible for conversion upon retirement. Extended medical and illness bank time used after 12 15 2020 
shall be deducted first from the retirement conversion paid at the wage rate at the time of usage. Now, therefore, be resolved by the City Council of the City of Jefferson, Wisconsin, that it here approves and authorizes for implementation the amendment to the City's personnel policy and procedure manual as relating to the conversion of extended medical and endless bank credits. I shall move. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Tully. Any discussion? We did have a uh, discussion of this at the committee of the whole this evening. Does anyone have seven credit questions rather about the policy change? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye as your name is called. No, if you are opposed. Alderman Byer. Aye. Niles. Aye. Miller. Aye. Randall. Aye. Young. Aye. Tully. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Resolution number 58, a resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in an amount not to see, exceed $555,000 for the fire station project. Hold the total, please. Thank you, Mayor. City of Jefferson, resolution number 58. Initial resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $555,000 for fire station project. Be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Jefferson, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, that there shall be issued pursuant to Chapter 67, Wisconsin Statutes, General Obligation Bonds, in an amount not to exceed $555,000 for the public purpose of paying the cost of construction of an engine house consisting of improvements to the fire station. I would so move. Second. Second. Second by Alderman Young. And discussion, any questions or comments? Hearing none. All in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye. Your name is called. No other opposed. Alderman Niles. Aye. Miller. Aye. Brandon. Aye. Young. Aye. Kelly. Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Resolution number 59, a resolution authorizing general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $2,245,000 for community development projects in tax incremental district number eight. Alderman Niles, please. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, citizens of Jefferson, City Council members. Be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Jefferson, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, that there shall be issued pursuant to Chapter 67, Wisconsin Statutes, general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $2,245,000 for the public purpose of paying the cost of providing financial assistance to community development projects under Section 661105, Wisconsin Statutes, by paying Project cost included in the project plan for the city's tax increment district number eight. I assume. It's been moved. Second. Second. Second by Alderman Brandel. Discussion. Tim, you want to just give a, a brief uh, update on what this will be used for? Because I'm sure people watching this at home want to know. Right. Well, we were going to talk a little bit about it a little later in the meeting. Oh, okay. But you, you want to save it for that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Let's come back to it. Okay. Uh, this this funding will uh, will cover some of the uh, proposed capital improvement projects for 2021. So we'll move on to resolution number 60. That, oh, okay, I'm sorry. 59. All in favor of approval of resolution number 59, please signify by saying aye as your name is called. No, you're opposed. Alderman Miller. Aye. Brandon. Aye. Young. Aye. Tully. Aye. Fire. Aye. Miles. Aye. Thank you. Now, resolution number 60, a resolution directing publication of notice to electors relating to bond issues. Alderman Young, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members, fellow Jefferson citizens. Whereas the initial resolution authorizing general obligation bonds has been adopted by the Common Council of the City of Jefferson, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, the city, and it is now necessary that said initial resolutions be published to afford notice to the residents of the city there of the city of their adoption. Now therefore be it resolved that the city clerk shall within 15 days publish a notice to the electors in substantially the form attached hereto in the official city newspaper as a class one notice under chapter 985 Wisconsin statutes. I would so move. It's been moved, sir. Second. Second. Second by Alderman Young. Aye. 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 A
Second by uh, Alderman Byer. And uh, this is the uh, publication of notice, as, as it uh, says, to electors relating to the bond issues that we will be issuing with the, the previous resolutions. So if there are no other questions or comments, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Your name is called. No for opposed. Alderman Brandel. Aye. Young. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Fire. Aye. Niles. Aye. Miller. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Resolution number 61, a resolution providing for the sale of not to exceed $2.8 million general obligation corporate purpose bonds. All the women buyer, please. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, and Citizens. City of Jefferson Resolution number 61. Resolution providing for the sale of not to exceed $2,800,000 general obligation corporate purpose bonds. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Jefferson, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, the city, has adopted initial resolutions, the initial resolutions, authority, author, uh, authority, authority, the, and the issuance of general obligation bonds for the following public purposes and in the following amounts. $555,000 for improvements to the fire station and B, $2,245,000 for providing financial assistance to the community development projects under section 66.1105 Wisconsin statutes by paying project costs included in the project plan for the city's tax intermental district number eight, whereas common council thereby finds and determines that the projects described in the initial resolutions are within the city's power to undertake and therefore serves a public purpose as the term is defined in section 67.04 parent one parent b wisconsin statutes now therefore be it resolved by the common council of the city that section one combina combination of issues the issues referred to above are here by combined into one issuance of bonds designated general obligation corporate purpose bonds, the bonds in the amount not to exceed two million eight hundred eight hundred thousand dollars for the purpose above specified. Section two, sale of bonds, the common council to authorize and direct that the bonds be offered for public sale at a subsequent meeting, the common council shall consider section bids for the bonds as may have been received and take action thereon. Section three, notice of sale. The city clerk in consultation with Ellers and Associates Incorporated, Ellers, B and Heron B directly to cause notice of the sale of the bonds to be disseminated in such manner, manner as at such times as the city clerk may determine and to cause copies of a complete notice of sale and other pertinent data to be forwarded to interesting bidders as the city clerk may determine. Section four, official statement. The city clerk in consultation with Ellen shall cause an official statement to be prepared and distributed. The appropriate city officials shall determine when the official statement is final for purposes of securities and exchange commission rule 15C2-12 and shall certify said official statement, such certification to constitute full authorization of such official statement under this resolution. I would submit. It's been moved, sir. Second. 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 Okay, is there any questions or comments? We've uh, uh, discussed this uh, a number of different ways tonight, so I think uh, we're all pretty prepared to move forward with this. If there are no other questions or comments, all in favor of resolution number 61, please signify by saying aye as Sarah calls your name. No, if you're opposed. Alderman Young. Aye. Sully? Aye. Fire? Aye. Niles? Aye. Miller? Aye. Aye. It was unanimous. Okay. Next, uh, resolution number 62, a resolution accepting a resignation of the expired term of all the person Vincent Krauss. Officer President Bradle, please. 
I'm Omir Opperman, fellow council member, citizens of Jefferson, city of Jefferson resolution number 62. Whereas the mayor and city council recently received notification that Vincent Krause has resigned his position as all the person at large prior to the completion of his term of office. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the common council of the city of Jefferson is to solicit letters of interest from qualified candidates to fill the vacant all the person at large seat for the remainder of the term, which expires in April of 2021. I so move. So move, is there a second? Second. Raise your hand. I got that. <laughs> you got that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Rob? Yeah. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Um, Two. Just is, um, is, is this what's likely to happen? Um, so, assuming the, res the resignation is accepted. Mm -hmm. You're going to put a notice in the paper, mm -hmm. and and anyone interested in being appointed to serve out the term by by the council, right? That has to be by the council. Mm -hmm. And you're asking, we're asking for people to respond by when? December thirtieth. I think thirty first. Thirty first. Okay, and then there, it'll be published. So anyone. December 31st. So there'll be a, a, a published uh, announcement in the, in the newspaper. We will also uh, use our social media to get the word out. Um, anyone who is interested in being appointed to the final uh, to serve out the remaining uh, few months of that term, we would ask to su submit a letter of interest to the city to address to Sarah, city clerk at 317 South Main Street in Jefferson. And that that time um, after the 31st of December, um, that will those uh, letters will be, be considered, and I would expect that at the following meeting of the city council. First, first meeting in January. First meeting in January, we would, okay. uh, we would seat someone for that position for the remainder of that. So, all right. Thank you. We can do this on our voice board, right? Okay, on a voice vote, all in favor of resolution number 62, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. It's unanimous. Okay, now, number 11, the discussion on the, the 2021 capital improvement projects. We turn it over to Tim. So <clears throat> I thought we would end uh, our uh, our very last meeting of 2020, or at least our regularly scheduled last meeting of 2020, with just a, a brief discussion of uh, things that we hope to accomplish in 2021. You know, uh, a lot of the things we'll talk about briefly tonight, you know, and you've heard, you'll get a little new information, I think, but, you know, 2021 is just one of those years where, there's an awful lot of large projects, some that are complicated. Some we're kind of dipping our toes in the water for the first time uh, on. And uh, we'll just run you through really, really quickly. Um, I think Bill's gonna start just by talking about Plymouth Street, which of course is the reconstruction of, of about three quarters of a mile of arterial street in the city. Thanks, Tim. Um, Plymouth Street, uh, as Tim has said, uh, it's approximately 3,700 linear feet. Uh, we're going to be resurfacing the roadway between South Main and Wisconsin Drive. Um, uh, design and replace the pavement uh, for appropriate loading. Um, we've got uh, a couple businesses on there that certainly have, especially Nestle, where we've got a lot of turning uh, movements outside onto Plymouth, and we've got some severe deterioration. So we expect to address certain locations uh, using concrete. Uh, we're going to be spot repairing the curb and uh, regrading the crown uh, for improved stormwater drainage. And uh, water main is going to be replaced between uh, Hillside Drive and uh, Garrity Street. Um, that project um, has been uh, um, started. Uh, the design back in uh, November 2020, the field surveys were completed by Town and Country Engineering. Um, in December, 
Uh, currently, they're working on the engineering design of the uh, street and water main. Um, we expect in January of 2021 that the uh, uh, that uh, we'll be advertising uh, the bid uh, for that project. Tim, you want to talk about the RLF closeout? Right, and just uh, uh, to jog your memory, so the city, like any Wisconsin community that has a revolving loan fund, has been directed to close all of those funds by the state of Wisconsin. Uh, we are doing so. We intend to settle with the state uh, sometime in January. Uh, the amount of uh, our revolving loan fund is a little over $700,000. So we're writing a check to the state of Wisconsin, and then the state will send that back to the city in the form of a community development block grant. Those are the funds that will be used to pay for the project that Bill is describing on uh, Plymouth Street. So I think most of our approvals are in pretty, pretty much in place. I don't know that there's anything on a complicated deal that's going to come up, I think. You know that's all well along to close it out and to receive those monies back and ultimately for the city to complete the project as as bills about the program. So we would anticipate our bid opening and award will happen uh, sometime in February of uh, 2021, um, and we can't sign those contracts until after the uh, uh, CDBG grant has been uh, uh, awarded and signed, and then we anticipate early May starting the project. Um, like always, we try to complete our street projects before Labor Day, um, so that's really what we're anticipating, but obviously there'll be more information uh, coming after the bid, and we have more of a, a schedule from the uh, from the contractor. We have been working with uh, uh, local businesses on that as well. So, Next project we're going to be talking about is the former Metal Springs Golf Course. Uh, this drawing simply shows the phasing of what uh, we had proposed, uh, the green happening in uh, 2021, uh, the orange happening uh, uh, 2022 or later, and uh, uh, the cyan uh, 2023 or later. Uh, Schedule-wise here, uh, December, we're completing the field survey and the boundary work uh, by Tulling Country Engineering. Uh, we'll be hiring Midwest Prairies to develop a specification for uh, bidding the uh, conservancy work. Um, January of 2021 is when we're anticipating closing on the property with Madison Gulf. Uh, from that point, things happen. Uh, there's a lot of things going to be happening. Um, we anticipate between January and April of 2021, we'll be working on the preliminary planning, engineering uh, for the residential development on the east side of the property off of Dewey. Uh, we'll be looking at the uh, preliminary and final plat to be considered by the plan commission. Uh, we'll be having uh, completing the abatement of the clubhouse facility and potentially the uh, the demolition of that clubhouse in that time period, or at least preparing for a demolition of that. Um, and then uh, the city council uh, will be uh, considering alternatives for the use of that clubhouse property. We've already discussed that. Um, a couple meetings, uh, but certainly uh, uh, City Council will be weigh, weighing in on the uh, ultimate use of that property. And then we would anticipate uh, bidding uh, the award of the Conservancy. And then starting in May, uh, extending through the end of the year, uh, Public Works crews will be working on the uh, one mile path of the Conservancy or through the Conservancy. Um, the work associated with the, uh, the Conservancy will be happening uh, this summer, and then we would anticipate the first visible com commencement of uh, residential construction on those first uh, one, one or more of those first four lots on the east side of the development just west of Dewey. Anything else you want to add? Yep, that was very, very good. The next development uh, which we've discussed is the Spangler residential development that's about 15 acres um, uh, north of Madison Street. Um, the drawing that I've got here kind of shows the uh, first phasing that we've discussed at earlier meetings which is um, uh, Masonic Taft extension and a cul-de-sac to be able to open up about um, 18 lots and some multi-family development. 
anticipated timeline here. Uh, currently, we're working on the field surveying and uh, the geotechnical work. Uh, most of that has been completed at this point um, in January um, at uh, either the first or second plan commission meeting. Uh, we're going to be shooting for the first on January 12th. Um, a certified survey map will be considered by the planning commission, which will allow the city to have a lot to uh, purchase from Spain leasing uh, LLC. And then we would anticipate uh, closing on that property. Uh, I think right now we're anticipating January, by January 31st. Um, happening uh, January to April of next year, we'll be working on the preliminary cladding engineering for the residential development that work is being concluded by uh, um, MSA. Um, preliminary and final flat uh, will be also considered by the planning commission and then the uh, city will um, uh, by that time uh, hopefully have a, a realtor um, under contract to be able to market the, uh, the residential lots. Um, starting in May continuing through the end of the year uh, the city will uh, um, install uh, the road extensions for Taft Avenue and Masonic Boulevard in the uh, proposed cul-de-sac. And we're anticipating that we will be seeing, we may see some visible commencement of residential, single family, multifamily lots on that uh, development as well. So just a couple of thing, things to add to, to Bill's comments for Bill's uh, question. Um, the larger of the two bond issues that we talked about in the resolutions tonight deals with uh, using the proceeds from the sale of that bond to fund phase one of the development of the Spangler property. So that includes the street extensions uh, shown here, as well as the ext extension of uh, utilities. And as Bill said, the goal ultimately is to create lots uh, primarily for the workforce housing and entry level housing or near entry level housing uh, on an affordable basis. That's really the goal of what we're trying to do here. Um, probably been a long time. I'm guessing Bill or Peggy, maybe you remember uh, since kind of the city participated in uh, the development of single family home sites like this. But um, I think the clock has come around and you know, we're, we're going to do it on, on this property. Um, generally speaking, if the economy uh, uh, does okay, um, this is an attractive site, the right price point. Quite honestly, that I, I'd expect the city to be able to sell these lots in relatively good order uh, over the course of perhaps the next two years, phase one, and hopefully we'll then be in a position to do the, uh, the final phase. Just a couple of things I want to not dwell on, but I want to hand out. Um, I think at the last meeting, or one of the last meetings, we talked about um, uh, a request for proposal from area real estate professionals, um, one that we might bring on board. I'm going to give you a copy of the request for proposal. And uh, we won't talk about it tonight, but Take a look at it if you have time, give me a call. I'm guessing sometime probably around the 1st of January, we'll probably distribute that. And then uh, I think the mayor will have to decide uh, what's the review panel for the proposers. Uh, and ultimately we'll be looking for that panel to make a recommendation to the full council on a, on, a, on a hire. So the uh, other thing that I wanted to hand out is um, and I don't think I would consider these to be in final form. They are a set of protective covenants for the single family lots that we propose to create on this property. But I think they're pretty good and I think largely subject to maybe a few amendments. I think it's what we're really looking for. So these deal with things like you. Uh, size of homes to be constructed and materials to be used. And, uh, it's not a, a long, extensive read, um, but uh, I'm going to suggest you take a look at them. Sometime in January, these are probably coming back uh, for formal consideration by the council. And I would tell you, Bill and I, we're no experts at this, 
But I think generally it's a pretty good starting point anyway. So I'll hand that out and hopefully you'll have a chance uh, to take a look at that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tim. Does anyone have any questions of Tim or Bill with regard to the project? Oh, you live in the Don't forget this one. Okay. So, the other smaller bond issue that we uh, talked about in uh, uh, one of the resolutions funds the project that we anticipate occurring in 2021 at the Jefferson Fire Department. Most of you know that facility was constructed in the early 80s. Um, the funds of approximately $550,000 or so uh, is used to uh, tackle the following maintenance type issues. Uh, a portion of the building will be replatted, uh, particularly the host tower. Um, the host tower has water damage from leaks that have occurred over a large number of years. Uh, these funds rebuild the floor drains inside the base of the fire hose portion of the property, uh, as well as uh, replacing uh, the concrete apron on the Racine Street frontage side, you know, that big sea of concrete um, that is deteriorating and it replaces that. The other thing that it does is um, it funds uh, the installation of solar panels on the EMS portion of the facility. Um, cumulatively, that's about $550,000 worth of projects. Um, I don't know that I necessarily have to go through this, but uh, it's safe to say that uh, on the non-solar piece, the design engineering is coming to an end. I would think by about the first of the year, we would have that. Um, after Moss Brothers, our construction manager reviews uh, these plans, you know, we'll bid it out, bid it out, and hopefully sometime in that mid-February to early March time frame, um, we'll be able to approve a bid for the work and then start the project um, hopefully sometime in, in, in early May. Um, anything else, Bill, you can think of? I think that's it. Okay. Uh, next project I want to mention, um, kind of uh, two projects happening in 2021 and 2022. Uh, the first is Riverside Alley project we discussed, uh, extending from Dodd Street to Candice Street. Um, if anybody doesn't know, Riverside Alley is the alley uh, directly behind the uh, Main Street frontage uh, west of uh, Racine, or of uh, South Main Street. Um, the second uh, project is the downtown streetscape. And uh, we've discussed this at previous council meetings as well. Uh, we've got several trip hazards um, that exist down at our main downtown uh, because of the uh, existing trees and pavers. Um, we've done some cold patching simply to uh, eliminate some of these trip hazards. Um, so what we're anticipating uh, proposed schedule of these two projects, uh, Riverside Alley underground utility design and PSC approval, we're anticipating somewhere, I believe Scott's working on that um, with the Forester Engineering uh, between now and uh, June 2021, that schedule may shift slightly. Um, and then uh, uh, conceptual layout and review approval of the Riverside Alley and downtown streetscape within that time frame. Uh, July through December of next year, um, construction to bury the overhead wires in Riverside Alley from Racine Street Bridge uh, north of Candice Street. Um, design of the river, Riverside Alley um, from the city's portion of that, um, that'd be the resurfacing uh, would happen next year with the planned construction the following year. We'd also be looking at a uh, conceptual layout and design of the streetscape um, in downtown. Um, there'd be some plan coordination with adjacent property owners adjacent to Riverside Alley. And then we would also receive input likely from the uh, probably the chamber and downtown businesses regarding the uh, streetscapes uh, design uh, that we would expect next year. And then uh, 
April through June of 22 will be the completion of the construction to bury the overhead wire in Riverside Alley. Once that is completed, then July of 22, uh, the city's portion would take over as far as resurfacing uh, Riverside Alley. And then uh, the downtown streetscape construction will occur sometime in that time frame uh, in 22. And then the, the last project before we go home, um, I just wanted to mention is um, I'm confident, meaning I feel it's vastly more likely than not to happen, is um, we will be able, I believe, to utilize a portion of the county's revolving loan fund, which they have to close out to undertake a project. They think we talked about the one we were submitting um the Jefferson Senior Center and uh generally speaking it's not a done deal but I would expect minimally uh the size of the project to be about 115,000 and could potentially be more um I think Cindy Keller told you we're looking to prioritize uh the roof replacement and you know we maybe if we get that much money be looking at kind of a lifetime warranty metal roof uh, rather than shingle roof, which it is now, um, as well as redoing the plumbing and putting the contactless fixtures in the restrooms and things like that, as well as uh, the flooring and the facility. Um, it's been a while since we've uh, done a lot of projects down there. We've undertaken changing all windows and furnaces and things like that. But um, I think this could be a large enough sum of money that this is a pretty big project and um, you know we would have to there's always a lot of paperwork and a lot of bureaucratic regulation on these block grants but I think you'd have to be in a position to undertake the project in 2021 so um, I suspect we're going to be kind of talking a little more about this in January or February um, but that's it we wanted to cover some ground quickly uh, I'm going to wish you all a Merry Christmas and uh, and a happy new year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.